has not been here at the blockchain meetup yet. Yes, very good. So I need to make the slides. Um, well, they're, they have a meaning when I show the slides again. So all the others, they probably know them already. Some of them at least. So the blockchain hub uh, is currently one of seven hubs. Uh, Zurich is not on it yet. So I have not updated the slides. Uh, and Brazil is soon coming. So we started with three hubs uh, in Brussels and in, in Berlin and uh, basically uh, signed on a couple more in Sofia, in Vienna, um, in Oslo, um, and uh, yeah, and Zurich uh, just recently, and, and, and uh, I think Sao Paulo in, in Brazil uh, is talking. So what is the blockchain hub network? So it's a non-profit, uh, networking kind of community. So we are not connected to uh, to the other hubs, so we are loosely connected, we talk to each other, we have regular uh, online meetings where we exchange opinions, ideas, what is happening in the space, what is happening uh, what is happening on the EU level, and what is done by regulation with people about blockchain and those kind of things. Um, and of course, if we are looking locally, we're connecting to other networks and, and organizations um, to show uh, what is the potential of blockchain, what can be done, what cannot be done, what should not be done, uh, and so on. So uh, this, is, this is basically our work. For example, tomorrow there is a workshop uh, invited by the Ministry of Economics, and uh, they kind of uh, are kind of keen on, on, on the blockchain activities and uh, there we, we support this well. So the blockchain hub meetup in Graz is one of the five largest blockchain and Bitcoin meetups in Austria. So we are still gaining. I did not update the other numbers, I just updated ours. <laughs> <laughs> So it might be that the other states too, but, uh, but basically we have currently 337 uh, blockchainers here in Graz, which is the second biggest uh, meetup uh, here in Graz, or the meetup community uh, behind uh, JavaScript. So uh, I think this will take a while until we get there, but with all the hype going on, so keep telling your friends and they should register and then at finally we can claim the victory uh, of all we that here in Um So what did we do um, during basically last year? We were uh, talking about um, <coughs> forming our own organization, it's called Lab10 Collective. The Lab10 Collective is a, is a cooperative uh, with uh, currently 33 members. Uh, so you will meet a lot of people in here which belong to this cooperative. Um, and a uh, cooperative needs somebody who is controlling the cooperative. This is Flickings, which is basically uh, auditing us every second year. And uh, on the right side you see uh, our still currently uh, Minister of Economics who was here mid of September playing a little go, and I will come there uh, a little later. So actually what we do, we have a very strong uh, blockchain focus in this organization, and uh, this is kind of our vision to go towards a free, educated and free society. Uh, that's, uh, and that's very kind of education and blockchain driven and project driven towards shared economy. So that's kind of the focus of, of this cooperative. So if you are interested more in that, just come to one of us guys here, straight around later. Uh, where can you get more information? This is uh, something we did uh, last year uh, together with the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there is like 60 pages. If you're new to blockchain, uh, basically the, you can read there from the very beginning some kind of history. Uh, going to more technical things in fourth chapter. Uh, so you just have to register and get know-how, and then you can download the PDFs uh, for free uh, from the commerce. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, the YouTube channel. 
So we put there, when we have kind of video footage like today, we put there something on the, on the uh, YouTube channel, you find something there from last year's uh, competition, there was the blockchain startup contest, uh, which was, um, was held in, in, in autumn, where we had like 80 startups, 29 countries, kind of fun event at the very end, so it was uh, kind of kind of nice thing. Nobody knew blockchain then, actually. So, for example, a Status, uh, which is making a wallet and chat client for Ethereum, uh, they won as one of two startups uh, in that event, and they raised 100 million uh, this year uh, in, in their ICO, I think in May. So this is like there they competed for 5,000 euros at that time. So you see how fast this is going. So um, if you need to find slides, can we get your slides? Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, uh, we 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 put slides on on the blockchain upgrades as well. So if somebody wants to look them up later, so you will find them there as well. Um, if you have played Go on the Kunsthaus with Play for Privacy, the last project that we did. Uh, in uh, October it ended, and you have not redeemed your tokens yet. You're, you get a kind of description how it is done. It was sent on Twitter, I think it's on the web page. Um, and uh, please get your tokens. Uh, they're on the Ethereum blockchain, so basically you need just a little bit more ether as well to send them around. Uh, you can, of course, uh, uh, try to trade it on a decentralized exchange. Um, so, yeah, well, that's basically uh, it for, for the introduction. I would like to say a couple of words for our today's speaker. So, Walter, I'm very <laughs> curious. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I looked you up, so, okay. So Walter, he, he flew in from, uh, from Switzerland and he just arrived, so we were not sure if he's going to make it, but glad you're here. Um, and he's actually from Kieselstaff in studio, so he's there too, so he's not just in Switzerland, he's also here. And uh, he started the Austrian chapter of IBREA. IBREA stands for International Blockchain Real Estate Association. And um, he spent his career as an IT programmer, head of development, CTO and board member. And uh, his focus was in, in IT uh, on innovation and headed the IT strategy and several teams there. Uh, and also blockchain development, obviously. Or at least you like that. Uh, but probably <laughs> you can tell us more about yourself later. Um, Privately, he's also a real estate investor and holds an MBA on IMD Lausanne and has a master's degree in computer science. So, thank you for having me. And thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Looks good. All right. <clears throat> so, hello. Thanks for coming. It's quite late in the evening. So I thought I uh, I don't uh, make it a little bit different. Maybe it's more uh, uh, more fun to put it in a different way. Uh, first, talk about myself. Uh, I'm Eric Pichstoff. First hangover, actually. So I was raised in uh, in Styria. Um, my headquarters, or and my the, the middle, the middle of my life now is in Switzerland. I live in Bar, which is uh, in the so-called Crypto Valley. So Ethereum Foundation was founded uh, 200 meters from my from my flat, and um, I'm still uh, attached, uh, of course, to my hometown because of the parents. And also, uh, I think it was about, about three years ago. Uh, my brother, he's sitting in the background, he is a uh, uh, real estate investor and he brought me, brought me into the business. So I had uh, 
you know, you, you, had, you had good money in Switzerland, so I had to spend it. So and he uh, helped me to spend it. So uh, <laughs> we invested in, uh, in bricks and we built some, some houses there. And that's how I was involved in the, in the real estate business. Not as a professional, I don't build houses, but I just give money to some people and they build something and we rent it out. Um, professionally, why IT? I was the younger brother, so I, I was weaker, and he was always the, always the stronger, so I had to be smarter. So I started <laughs> in, uh, in IT. So I think that's a uh, fate of a lot of uh, younger brothers. Um, that brought me to IT. Uh, that brought me also to Switzerland. So I uh, started in Langford, Carinthia, and then I made a brought here to New York. Uh, and uh, the first company I worked with, we just made projects in Zurich, basically. I worked there for seven years, and after seven years flying back and forth, I said, okay, why not move to Switzerland? And uh, I'm living now in Switzerland for the last few years. Yeah. Okay. Maybe where was my first encounter with blockchain? It was a quite interesting story. Uh, I had a, I was a consulting uh, company, and uh, I had a main day at Credit Suisse. So I worked with a lot of big companies. Um, and um, the people from the foreign exchange trade, so the traders from the trading floor, they approached me. I think it was in, uh, uh, what do we have to say, it was like four or five years ago, and they asked me, uh, what do you think about uh, Bitcoin? And I said, what? <laughs> so then I read the white paper, and of course I said, oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> because I didn't understand it, so it was too complicated. But uh, it, it, it stuck on my mind, and I, of course, it popped up again and again, and uh, that's how I got to know more and more. And uh, in my company, we did a, a couple of projects. Uh, the largest one is called uh, OTC Blockchain. Uh, is it? Yeah, it's um, basically it's over the counter business. Uh, so there is a market where let's, let's put it that way: there are shares which can be bought at the stock exchange, so they are not listed shares. And uh, that, to trade these shares, it's uh, in Switzerland, or actually in Europe, it will be prohibited. So you're not allowed to trade them anymore because you're not following uh, the legal structures of MIFI 2 or the EU regulations getting more and more heavier to, to deal with this kind of stuff. And basically, we built a compliance uh, system in order to be able to trade these shares, decentral. So we had a business case, it would cost like 5 million to build such a system, or we put it decentralized on the blockchain and actually uh, the, the users of the system just run the nodes and everybody cares about their own stuff. So that was basically the case, it was a cost case for blockchain. This was the biggest one. Okay, now, blockchain and real estate. So I, have, I, I work in IT for a long time. I invested with a brother in real estate, and um, when doing so, we had discussions uh, with, with our business partners, and of course they asked me after two years what, what I'm doing, uh, and I said, yeah, I'm IT, I do blockchain, and then we, we played some ideas what you can do with it. So that's where blockchain and uh, real estate uh, first and met. And we, we're currently working uh, on a project, it's, uh, it's a decentralized crowdfunding platform. Basically, it's decentralized, democratized investing in real estates to make it, uh, real estate investors more fluid. And uh, yeah, that's our vision. But we are, we haven't even started yet. So, <laughs> will be a long, a long way to go. So basically, uh, who who doesn't know about Bitcoin? Uh, who hasn't uh, basic knowledge about uh, blockchain? Who is completely new? Nobody. So everybody has an idea what blockchain is, right? So uh, basically, of course, uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer system, and in one sentence, we want to transfer land titles, uh, German Grundbuch Einträge. We want to sell flats or parts of flats or parts of houses or bricks, whatever, peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. So. If, if any one of you has ever tried to sell a house, or buy a house, or buy a part of a house, or a flat, there's a lot of uh, discussions with the government, a lot of uh, paperwork involved. And the reason is, of course, now with blockchain, we don't need this anymore, basically. Of 
course, it's not that easy. <laughs> but uh, that's basically the reason why uh, such associations like the uh, Iberia exist. Iberia uh, was founded, I don't have, ah, 2013, fortunately it's out there, by a guy called Ragnar Riffers here. I think he it looks like a quite a good surfer, I never met him in, in person. Um, but he he was he did the first uh, blockchain project with Visual Research. And so he founded this organization. And the idea is uh, very similar to the uh, blockchain hub. There is a non it's a non profit organization, and you want to move uh, the whole topic a little bit uh, forward. So you have a lot of lawyers there, you have IT guys there, there's a lot of education around. Basically, you, if, if I would go to the Wirtschaftskammer or the, the Chamber of Commerce and ask, hey, please uh, uh, try to change uh, the land registry, uh, they will say, oh, who are you? And so if I have some more in the background, some more guys in the background, they have, uh, I think, about 3,000 members, uh, it has more importance. So that's basically why such organizations exist. And now, uh, those exist in Austria, because I ask uh, for a chair for Graz in Austria, and I'm actually the first member in Austria for this organization. <laughs> so anybody who wants to join is invited, and uh, the benefits you have is basically you get some, you, you join the LinkedIn group and you get some, uh, some news updates, that's about it. So you know what's happening. Okay, this is a quick overview, about yeah, 3,600 members, it's uh, already quite a global movement. Now it's a really clone because it's Austria. And uh, again, <coughs> I tried to put together, uh, I like the slides uh, from the uh, WF, from the World Economic Forum. It shows actually why it's so hard to do blockchain projects. It's always uh, boils down to that problem. You always have uh, uh, regulation problems, which means you have to change laws, or uh, what you do is just illegal, like China bans uh, the Bitcoin exchanges, etc. Uh, the next one, the incumbents, means uh, you have uh, big companies. If, if you think of uh, Bitcoin, you have banks. So you have a lot of companies who sit there on a big chair and they don't uh, want you to enter the market or disrupt something. And um, they usually have the access to the, to the clients. They will do everything they did not enter the market. And the last one is, of course, uh, uh, you need the, the companies, the fintechs. Uh, which master the technology in order to get forward. So uh, the sweet spot, if, so if you have a nice idea and you know how to program with Ethereum or whatever, you're just there. But actually you need to be right in the middle. That's that what makes so heavy. So you need to know uh, what to change on the relations and you need, maybe you have a partnership with a big one, with a big competitor who is willing to join you because it's very hard to find uh, to fight the big ones. They are only it's possible, but you have to be very lucky. Okay, so uh, what are the main problems for real estate? Um, I'm gonna ask you, but do you have any idea why, it's, why do we need blockchain for trading or doing real estate uh, business? Yeah. You can easily manage uh, or see who else has real estate or an easy trade it, of course. So that's the transfer, uh, transfer titles. That's mm -hmm. yeah. More ideas? Probably it's quicker. Yeah. Of course it saves cost if you don't have to do all the paperwork. You don't need to trust it though, right? Mm -hmm. Like a so No tar, you don't need them. Can see who owned the property right before, before, mm -hmm. before, before. Basically, uh, if, uh, you can also, if you have the vision, you can also store like the plans or who did which engineering. Mm -hmm. So uh, the old information doesn't get lost. It's right attached into the, uh, like if you have a service like uh, Whisper. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, one project was done in Chicago. Uh, real estate and the basic the main motivation was there because Chicago has a long history of uh, not being uh, <laughs> very acting according to law so uh, a lot of transactions were fraudulent so that's basically a tax spending problem just uh, or they rent out the house and then they sell it 
or vice versa. That happens a lot. Of course, this can not easily it can happen also as well as the blockchain if you do if you fake addresses whatever. But uh, in principle, it's not uh, possible. All right. So uh, what is Ibria? Ibria the way? Um, they uh, run projects by themselves. So the Chicago uh, example was done by uh, Raghav Lifters here. He has a own company, uh, Vlux.ra, I think it's called, and uh, they, they did the prototype here. Yeah. So uh, uh, I come a bit later to the projects. Uh, what's very important for Ibria is what they're doing now, trying to build a community. The basic community building is just, just having meetups all over the world. So in each, each city in the world, there should be an Ibria chair. So uh, if somebody in Vela shows up and says, hey, I want to make an Ibria, I'm in real estate, and I, know, I want to know more about blockchain, maybe that could be a start for a new chapter in, in Vela. That's how they work. So in the, this, this way, it's interesting to see how, how the movement, how they try to, try to build up the movement, the world of movement. That's basically everything. And industry standards, uh, yeah, I think it's a bit far away right now to set standards. <laughs> there are just the POCs. Um, there are there are a couple of projects which are uh, already live, but uh, there are some countries who declare themselves uh, to manage real estate on the blockchain, but actually it's uh, it's very very early stage. So uh, this is just a, a sandbox, let's put it that way. We stay in this, uh, take a long uh, time. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the main implications of uh, block type, uh, blockchain is, uh, of course, a managed domain title. Who owns what? And uh, one of the biggest advantages of blockchain is that you can uh, easily share it. So that's a, a startup called uh, Block Square in Slovenia. Um, they basically follow this, they also do an ICO, I think, in a couple of months. Uh, that's basically the idea. Um, you can buy a part of a house, so you really can slice property down to very, very small units. And uh, with that comes, of course, crowd financing, with that come, with that come, uh, come other business models. The smart contracts part, I think, um, there is uh, the most creativity. Behind it, uh, my brother and I we are thinking about uh, uh, um, creating a platform with smart contracts where you get a share of the rent. So you you do a crowdfunding from the public to build a, an apartment, and the, the guys who hold the tokens basically get twenty percent of the rent. That's it. So uh, we are still responsible to run it uh, with profit, but the investors uh, they just share the risk that the apartments are rented out. So that's, that's, quite, a, that's quite interesting because uh, uh, the investors, they share some risk that, it, that we can go, go broke basically, we get the money for crowdfunding and they have, uh, they participate in the rents go up because when the rents go up, their share also goes up, the 20% of the rent, but we are still uh, responsible for running uh, the whole system efficiently. So they don't share the risk that we screw up and buy uh, you know, ex too expensive stuff for the, for the apartment. And you can hardly do that if, uh, nowadays with, uh, with our contracts. It would be too complicated. With blockchain, it's, it's much easier to do. It's very easy to, to, to prove how many apartments are rented out, what is the rent, and then you share it out automatically. <laughs> Uh, tokenization is another business case tokenization, of course, the financing part is basically crowdfinancing. Uh, you, do, you don't do an ICO, you do an IBO, an initial brick offering, basically. You get money and uh, then you, you build the house. And uh, I talked about uh, the, the ownership, the, uh, about uh, tokenization. And uh, this is a slide from uh, Chromeway. Chromeway is a, a Swedish company. Uh, they probably did the largest uh, project. They, what they did, they built their own blockchain and uh, they tried to digitize the whole process from um, if you inquire uh, to buy something and you can just see 
the, from, from the land title to the mortgage, they have kickbacks there, they have loan applications, uh, they have the whole credit uh, stuff, and they also do the, the escrowing if you pay and, uh, if you pay the house and you get the and only if the land title gets transferred, the other party gets the money, the stuff like that. So this was quite a large project. Uh, but uh, there's only one project, currently one project in the world, and that's the one from Chicago, who was run on a public blockchain. So I find it a little, a little bit ridiculous if you put uh, you know, a public ledger on a private blockchain. So weird, because that's state controlled anyway. So where's the point of doing that? If it's an Oracle database or it's a private blockchain, uh, yeah, of course it's a difference, but uh, still the, if the, the, the country is fraudulent, if the, if the country is run, uh, is run by Mugabe, then you still have a problem. Okay, any questions? All right, here are um, some projects I highlighted, uh, already talked a bit. Uh, Republic of Georgia, uh, Georgian, not Georgia in the US. It's, uh, there's also Estonia, which is quite a uh, front-running blockchain projects. But what they did in Georgian is um, basically, um, they also they, they, they put their, their land registry on the private blockchain. So it's just who owns what. Uh, basically copy the old system, but now it's data saved on the blockchain, that's about it. And um, uh, any transaction which changes the private blockchain, uh, the hash rate is put on, on the Bitcoin blockchain. So it's a, it's a hybrid project, very simple. And uh, yeah, not, not a big deal, actually. But still private, but secured uh, publicly. The Cook Country, uh, that's the one of uh, Ragnar, the founder of Ebria. And um, so what he did is uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain, he's uh, on a very heavy uh, fight for the... I'm, I'm more a Ethereum guy because I came late into the game. He's more a Bitcoin guy. It was very early. And his, he argues uh, that uh, on the blockchain is one true blockchain and forget about Ethereum or the rest because it's unsecured. It's quite uh, interesting to see such, to hear such hard uh, accusations to Ethereum or to program and blockchains. So he basically says uh, anything is done on Ethereum is uh, is not secure, and he claims uh, forget about it. Quite uh, quite funny. And what he also said uh, for his uh, POC in Chicago, um, as you might. Uh, the most, the biggest challenge, uh, or the most time was wasted uh, in talking with lawyers. The project had like two developers, but five lawyers, in order to make it really run and uh, or legally accepted. And what's also very special about the U.S. system, maybe uh, just um, common uh, in the U.S., uh, this the system is called it's a deed system. So it's not like uh, the ledger here in, uh, in Europe where you have one book where the property is uh, recorded. In the US, uh, it's, uh, uh, you can buy and sell however you like. And if you make a contract, I send you uh, my, my house. Uh, I take the contract and I go to the public office and say, OK, uh, this contract uh, proves that I sold or you bought my house. That's it. But it's no, there's no official book which records it. So if anybody says, ah, oh, this is my house, I said, no, no, I bought it. So look, uh, my, my, the deed, it's called the deed, is recorded here in this office, so they can uh, go look it up. So there's no central system. And uh, what, they do, what they did basically is, uh, it's a one pager uh, with a Bitcoin address and uh, the names on it. So basically, okay, this is the contract printed out and uh, there's a, a 2D code on it, which points to the address. And this is the, the proof that the transaction made. So uh, it's not public, uh, not easy to look up, but it's now it's on the transaction can happen on the blockchain. Of course, it's much faster. Okay, uh, the Slovenian guys may be interesting for Styria. Um, 
what they did is uh, they have also a ledger. So what they did, um, uh, let me think quickly. Yeah, um, when they did a transaction, a land, um, <coughs> it's actually not much difference to that what Aragna did. Uh, if we if we do a transaction, that's an Ethereum contract, and uh, yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, it's, but it's still a POC, and uh, and the, the address of the contract just is uh, is a field in the public ledger of uh, the land titles. So what they did, they changed the IT system by just adding one new field, and that contains the address uh, of the Ethereum contract or of the transaction. I'm not quite sure. That's it. So that's how they join the two worlds. But you see. All right. I talked about quickly about that. So how can you engage? That's the website. You can go to LinkedIn. You can join also the meetup. Uh, I haven't checked. I don't, I don't expect to overtake the JavaScript group. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, if you talk to somebody real estate about uh, blockchain, he say, they say what? So uh, there's pro probably a group which is the most least interested group of uh, who, who are interested in blockchain stuff because they just care about pipes and roofs and, and bricks and uh, they, that that would be very hard not to crack. But it's a it's a very simple example. So if you're taking land title as an example, uh, everybody understands that blockchain will improve the process, it will speed up the process, it will so usually I, I like that kind of example with like a big kind of book, so everybody gets it. That yeah. makes a lot of sense for I think it's one of the, the, the most used examples, but the least implemented. Yeah, okay. <laughs> What would happen if, if uh, hackers would break into the system and get uh, get the uh, entitlement for yeah, at least the you have, at least you have to track who take your title and uh, yeah, but how do you get it back into the you get your hard fork <laughs> 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 I don't know so uh, basically if the blockchain is hacked uh, or let's say the typical blockchain hack, if you in the side chain, you get stronger, I think you can forget about that one. But uh, let's say you introduce a transaction which is fraudulent and nobody notices it. Ten years after somebody claims it, or I don't know, you do a transaction and then you murder the, the, uh, the owner of the old building, something like that. Um, at least uh, you have the trail on, uh, on the blockchain and you know what's, what's happened. And nobody can thank it. And uh, if, if you take the, the counter example from Mugabe, if uh, if you know uh, Mugabe wants see, sees your nice property and nice house, and he has a son, and he says, "Hey, pa, I want to have this house." And he says, "Oh, come here, son. I show you something. How this is done here in, in my country." And then he goes to the ledger and changes the name, and then he closes the book, and it's done. Nobody would ever uh, see what happened, and of course, on the blockchain, uh, you have to trade. Okay. Uh, next thing is um, I want to talk a little bit uh, about the blockchain conference. I uh, will be the way. <coughs> so uh, I'm talking with uh, those, um, let's say, with my business partners from the real estate investments, and we want to. Uh, create a new blockchain-based platform. And uh, as I told you, we haven't even started yet, but in order to, to give it a try, or just to, to, to tap into the market, if uh, the topic blockchain and real estate maybe works or it does not work, whatever, or it, does anybody care, basically, we said, okay, let's, let's make a conference. Let's put the conference, make a title, let's call it real estate and blockchain, and uh, see how who, who will come. So. Uh, this was the initial thought, and I, uh, I took care about it, and I went completely somewhere else, and I will show you in a minute. Yeah. And the startup, I don't talk about the startup uh, right now, you can talk to me afterwards, no problem. Um, but I want to take the chance to show you a, bit, a little bit about that one. So I gave you the, 
the brief intro of how this uh, evolved. So uh, we had like uh, we were like very enthusiastic. Yeah, let's build a crowdfunding platform based on blockchain. And we, of course, we didn't know will this ever work. So we said, okay, we made an uh, immobilian and blockchain conference and uh, for a half day. And uh, I talked to those guys from the Giving Magazine uh, to the Wirtschaftskammer, to the Chamber of Commerce, and they, they were all like, cool, cool, cool. And then suddenly, okay, half day, it's, uh, we have to make it a day, a full day. And uh, we ended a bit more general. So uh, in March, uh, 9th of March, we plan to make a, a blockchain conference here in the Arts at the Siphon Fabric. And uh, please talk about it. I hope we get it full. <laughs> the break even is about 120, 130 30 people. It's, uh, it's quite a risk. So please try to help to get the dolls moving. And uh, those are basically uh, what, what's happening. So it's, a, the, it's about the whole day. We have the topics blockchain. Uh, yeah, basically, you, you will see it also online. And, um, this is, I think you all know this. We have uh, some, uh, already organized some speakers. I have reserved these spots for, uh, uh, yeah, still to come. You probably know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you have to paint the beautiful, as you recognize. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's just temporary. <laughs> 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 so, uh, basically, uh, a lot of Swiss guys, the Slovenian guys are coming. Uh, There's Peter Mirza from the think tank Slovenia. He's quite active. Uh, for, I also invited the Finanzmarkt Aufsicht, which, give, uh, which will uh, give uh, an idea how the regulators are thinking of what we're doing. I, I know the FINMA very well. I worked with the Finanzmarkt, uh, what's the abbreviation? The, the, the FMI is the Finanzmarkt Aufsicht. Uh, in Austria, and the FINMA is the counterpart in Switzerland. So, and they, uh, yeah, you have to talk to them, to talk to them uh, if you want to do uh, some projects with the blockchain. And uh, the interesting thing is uh, that those guys actually they don't want you to do those things. But uh, what's currently quite hot is the competition between countries. Uh, so uh, Switzerland wants to be the country of blockchain, Austria wants to be the center of blockchain, <laughs> Singapore, Austria, uh, already London, lost. Huh? Austria already lost. Austria already lost. Yeah. Austria already lost. <laughs> already lost. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the, I think the match is not over. <laughs> so, like the, the, the real estate stuff, uh, you know, blockchain is so broad. And uh, this is just, you have so many different uh, aspects here within blockchain and it, I think it's, it's get just getting bigger and there will be a lot of specializations. So, um, that's maybe, maybe a, quite an interesting story. Uh, I invited teachers all, he is the, the CFO of uh, EatCore. I have uh, some good relations to the, to the Ethereum core team. And uh, to Switzerland to give a talk. And he is 21 years old. This guy, is, uh, I think, is from Hong Kong, and um, but uh, lives in London. And um, he he told he's still a student at the London Business School, and he told me he's flying around the world. Uh, he just uh, the week before I invited him to Switzerland, he spoke to the Prime Minister of Australia. So those they are like a Vitalik, you know, the young guy is the, he's 20, 21 years old and. He's invited uh, all over the world to, to governments and they all want to talk to those guys because they, nobody has an idea what to do with them. That's, uh, that's a big challenge and the one who is the smartest or whatever, I think the, the, small, the small countries have a, a big advantage because uh, there's much less at risk. In the US, of course, or China have to be much more conservative. In Switzerland, uh, I, I, I know the guys and uh, they, are, they know the startups there, so it takes one or two years and you're in, in, into it, and you know everybody. And, uh, in, and that never happens in the US, and cannot. It's too big, or in China. So uh, the, the smaller countries, for the smaller countries, this is a big advantage. <coughs> All right. 
So maybe to the people, this guy is, uh, is also an Austrian. He is, uh, uh, he's very aware, he, he, does, he does business with Estonia, um, uh, of course in Switzerland. Uh, he knows all the different uh, unique aspects of different countries. The, uh, Arthur, he, he developed um, uh, a tool to verify smart contracts. I forgot the name. Um, yeah, but it's quite popular, quite popular. Okay. So I think that's about it. Yeah, it doesn't work <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, so thank you for your talk. So maybe what I can help is uh, if uh, I'm in Switzerland and you want to do something in Switzerland or I don't know if you want to get rich and I saw maybe I'm not, the, I'm not the right person but I can link you to that right person. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any, any questions regarding Abria, the conference, uh, blockchain and, and real estate, anything you come up with? Yeah. Uh, are there any special projects that you're aware of that are more centered on uh, less uh, like building new houses but managing existing property in terms of rent or something like that in on the blockchain? I am not aware of any project, but I have been asked these questions uh, not the first time. And uh, one one question was uh, specific about uh, the whole the managing uh, if a house for Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I never did give it a deep thought to be honest. I think there, there might be some potential, but uh, because blockchain just scales well. Could yeah. be. Okay. Any other question? Mm -hmm. Do you still need a notary for the real estate and transfer in the, in the blockchain? Um, depends on the laws, of course. That's the first, uh, one of the first slides that I showed you. I think uh, we go in, in the direction that, uh, let's say, a very repeatable standard processes, they don't need a notary anymore. So, uh, uh, for example, if you cre create a company um, in Switzerland, just the, the law is discussed that they don't want you to go to the notary anymore. So you just uh, create your startup basically by mouse click. And Delaware is like that. So uh, uh, it goes in that direction. Uh, regarding Chrome Away, uh, you know, have they some kind of Sort of notary or something like that in there in their process. Yeah, they have everything there, uh, but it's not rolled out. Like uh, I think they concentrated in, in Stockholm for some uh, projects, um, but it's very limited. It's, it's sandboxed. Okay. So it's, uh, is there any intention of something you you're aware of? Well, I, guess, I guess so. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. I think the main intention of, uh, for them was uh, their own ICO. So uh, they made a, uh, first we made a project and then uh, they asked basically for money. Of course, uh, there's a higher chance you get more, but the craziness nowadays uh, you don't even need a project. But uh, that was their, uh, I think, their strategy. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay, then, thank you very much again. So, thanks.